The goal of the Journal of Forensic Sciences is to advance forensic science research, education, and practice by publishing peer-reviewed manuscripts of the highest quality. Editor-in-Chief Michael Pete is here now in studio to discuss this. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. So to get started, how does the journal strengthen the scientific foundation of forensic science? When people get published, that publication, in my view, is a mark of the scientific rigor of that paper. It's been through a peer review process, almost always goes through a revision process, another peer review process. So we have scientifically reviewed that paper and deem it worth publishing. That doesn't mean necessarily in the forensic field that it's legally acceptable. It means it's scientifically acceptable and increasingly that's, um, you know, it's a very broad sp spectrum between the two, increasingly. So we obviously provide reviews, as I said, we provide papers for others in the sense that when we publish something, some other scientists can p pick up that paper work their research project around it. We provide teaching aids because it's in the literature and people can download it, etc. So we provide a lot of aid to the forensic science profession in publishing articles in the journal. And it's all electronic. It went electronic maybe 20 years ago now. So, and that certainly has um, accelerated uh, the acceptance of uh, the journal of forensic science. How does the journal benefit members of the academy? I think it provides a resource to them. It provides a scientific resource. They have access to the articles that are published. They can use those for their own teaching purposes, for their own research purposes. And certainly I think it's, it's appropriate that the academy has a very strong journal. Mm -hmm. um, and we encourage people to use it. We encourage people to publish in it. So it's, it's a very strong resource, and I think it's uh, a, a vast benefit to the uh, membership. And increasingly, it's the basis, the or articles in there are the bases for what's called validation studies. And you read about those in the press sometimes when a case is being tried. And validation studies are really continuing the work published in JFS, transferred to somebody's own lab, and they have to go through a whole series of studies before it can be presented in court. So what would your advice be to somebody wanting to submit their work for publication? Um, two, well, three things, actually. I, I think you, you've got to determine how you're going to publish it. We publish papers, we publish technical notes, we publish case reports, occasionally we publish critical reviews and commentaries. So you first got to think about where is the audience? What's the audience going to be? If you're adapting a method, it could be a technical note because that's the sort of audience that would be reading an adaptation of a method. If you're doing a full-blown research study that's uh, by a graduate student, then it will be submitted as a paper. So that's the th first thing. The second thing would be to make sure you write it in the English language with all due respect. It's part of uh, what we find very difficult, particularly with people from Asia, uh, Europe, etc. that the, the language doesn't do the article wor any worthy benefit. It's, mm -hmm. So they really need to get those things straight before they submit. And then finally, I got to, you've got to have the scientific rigor. If you, if you just submit something you did on the bench on Friday, well, yes, probably not going to pass muster. <laughs> so you've got to have the scientific rigor. Yeah. Michael Pete, we certainly appreciate your time today. Thank, thank you. you for joining us. Well, thank you.